The Road to War. Written and narrated by John Miro. Get more at servingworlds.com. Thirty-five. The pressure door exploded, a shaped charge propelling the jagged rectangle of metal straight for the group. A corner of it slammed into Tyler's neck, knocking his mech back against a wall and sending the door hurtling safely over everyone else's heads. Lee tugged Padalecki to the ground and shaped a shield of crystal between them just as a heavy assault rifle erupted. Lee heard Willard shouting over the shattering sounds of Crystal being chipped away from his shield. The chubby doctor, Bonner, screamed, and Lee saw blood spurt out of his arm. The attacking form was getting closer. With a thought, a small slot appeared at eye level in his shield. He peeked through and closed the hole just before the next barrage of bullets landed. Janine, it's Lee, stand down, these are civilians. The firing ceased. Phoenix? Lee stood up and looked around. Tyler's mech was flattened against the side of the corridor. Spikes of crystal had torn through the cockpit. Blood seeped down their lengths and trickled to the floor. Padalecki looked and saw what happened to Tyler. She whirled to face Janine, snarling, You goddamn fuck it! Lee slapped her hard enough to turn her. He pushed her back towards the doctors. Keep them safe, he ordered. The private blinked away tears and nodded, turning and jogging unsteadily back to her charges. Lee summoned all of the crystal he got from Tyler, and a wall surged up behind him. Captain! Willard roared before the wall sealed up and blocked off all sound. He terminated the field, sustaining the crystal in its matrix form. The now fully solid crystal wall crackled as the pressures settled within it. Janine wasn't naked anymore. Now she wore some of Dr. Mentel's more fashionable workout clothes. She dropped the rifle to the ground and gestured at herself with both hands. I clean up nice, huh? She smiled, threw the blood still caked to her face. Did we all make it? She asked. Lee nodded. Baco, Thatcher, and Steeps are still under. Let's wake him up and hunt that bitch. She's still here somewhere. I can smell her kind of evil. Janine grinned. Remember how she made me hop on one foot, Janine, until I cracked three bones? I'm gonna crack all of her bones before I- We can't, Janine. Not until she gets a look at the takers. We- we need her alive until then. No! Janine raged. Christiel spiked out of the folds of her clothes, behind her back, along her arms. She dies! She dies today! Face and heart twisted. Lee flicked a wire-thin length of crystal from his wrist implant out towards her. Janine never saw it, but she froze in mid-rage as he shredded her heart. He raced across to her, got to her before she fell, and eased her down to the floor. I'm sorry, he whispered. The words were useless and made him feel ugly inside. She laughed. Don't be. I don't want to live if she's going to go on breathing. Her face squirmed, and she flopped her hand behind his head. Watch your clothes, Phoenix. Her hand grabbed the back of his head. He felt her implant knocking. He started to pull back, but her eyes pleaded. Let me get you off her leash. Stop, commanded another voice, and Dr. Mentel stepped through the hole in the pressure door, a familiar white and blue double-thick screen in her hands. Her leash. He stared at her and snarled. He gave Janine access to his implant, felt code instantly fly into his head. Push that thing away and stand up, Dr. Mentel commanded. Lee's body jerked to his feet, still dizzy as Janine's code filtered into his implant. Janine's final gift passed through him, and he understood it instantly, intimately. It was a patch changing whatever Dr. Mentel had hastily written, her last-ditch effort to re-establish control. And now, just as she had promised before, Janine had truly made him free. Mentel walked forward, looking past him at his handiwork. Now take down the wall, Lee. Still facing her, Lee built a filament of blue. It spiraled through the air and touched the wall. 
the dizziness passed. Janine's coat had rooted and come online, and he stood straighter again. Good boy, bring the wall down, she said, her chin jutting up. Give me a suitably impressive entrance for your friends. Physically connected to the wall now, it only took Leah thought. The wall collapsed instantly, looking for all the worlds like a wave of water. The wave rushed towards Lee, concentrating its mass swirling all around him until it disappeared back inside of him, and he groaned in pain with the effort. Hold it right there, Willard screamed. Drop what's in your hands, Dr. Mentel. Sweet as sugar, Mentel knelt and placed the tablet on the ground. Disarm them, Zhang, she whispered. Lee whipped his hand towards her. A blue scythe flew towards her face and slashed her cheek. She screamed and staggered back, a hand pressed to her face. He whipped his hand again, and the scythe fell on the blue and white screen, cleaving it into sparking pieces. Mantell looked to Janine's corpse and back to Lee, understanding what had transpired. She freed you with her code, hmm? Move, he snarled back. You have been listening to Reach, The Road to War. Written and narrated by John Miro. Music, all this, by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Hear more of the story at ServingWorlds.com. Thank you for listening.